Today, I have the honor and the pleasure to talk to Peter Linder. He's the head of 5G marketing for North America and to Peter Marshall, and he's the portfolio marketing manager for Ericsson. And they both work at Ericsson. And if we think about Ericsson, we think about 5G. 5G was launched nearly a year ago. And Peter Linder, can you share the developments from this last year? I think the development has been very intense. And if you if you compare two numbers from 4G to 5G, it's like the first year of 5G, we launched in the world 59 networks. And that first number for 4G was four. So there's a tremendous momentum in the 5G market. We at Ericsson has contributed by closing 91 contracts. We've launched 32 networks. Uh, out of those 32, we were first on the four different continents where, 4G was, where 5G was launched. And we also as served all the four big networks in the US. A lot of this is enabled by technology that is meeting the, uh, the first uh, generations of the standards and features and capabilities like dynamic spectrum sharing and carry aggregation, which allow you for smooth introduction on top of 4G. And Peter Marshall, what's the European view on this? European view is very similar. The only difference is, is that the spectrum availability is, is causing some delay in the rollout. If you look at the UK, the Irish and the German market, it's very, very predominant. It's got a lot of competition and very, very intense, like Peter's mentioned. There's a huge amount of um, competition going on. The thing that is standing out, though, is that we are working collaboratively with 50 industry partners across the world, and that is making the huge difference of bringing the full benefit of what 5G can bring moving away from mobile broadband to the non-mobile broadband opportunities that 5G was there for. Yeah, and if we look, the, the competition is high, but I think the expectations were high as well. And since the rollout, what has been your experience so far, Peter Marshall? So across the globe, we've seen a number of commonalities. We've seen a real kind of push to make um, the differentiation in the 5G services. If you look at Korea, which is a prime example of this, They've been using things as augmented reality gaming and having exclusive rights with companies called Haste, where they've got the kind of buy-in from the consumer that this can only happen on 5G. So let's be a part of the 5G community because you want augmented reality gaming. But they're also introducing new devices as well, such as 360 live streaming of extreme sports. And that's causing a real uplift in the traffic performance. What they've seen in Korea is a three times uplift in traffic just within the first two months. And already within Korea, they have 5 million customers already on 5G by the end of 2019. So a real level of intensity happening in the kind of consumer market. And that's kind of spreading over to both the European, the American, and also the kind of Middle Eastern area too. But the one thing we are seeing is a real focus on fixed wireless access as well. Fixed wireless access is raising its game. And 65% of all the 5G subscription has some form of fixed wireless access link in there. So that really helps with the kind of access and breaks down the digital divide of a lot of the communities that are suffering with not getting fiber access. But the one thing that is making that huge difference is that industry link. Like I mentioned before, we have those 50 industry partners, but those industry links are really bringing out what's possible in all different markets, manufacturing, transport, healthcare, agriculture, even some of the performing arts is really showing some value from 5G. And it's actually making a real sense to people say, well, actually 5G can make that difference. And Peter Linders, do you see a similar type of experience both in the B2C as in the B2B market? Yeah, similar experiences, but I would like to add three things. The first one I've seen that like the, the applications are divided in three different categories. We talked about enhanced mobile broadband and fixed wireless access here. On top of that one, we have the cellular IoT segment, which in itself contains the massive and broadband IoT, which you can do on 4G, and the critical IoT and industry automation IoT, which is more where you require 5G. The second thing I see is related to spectrum. For 4G, we, ex we, we, we expected 4G to be whatever the sun was. For 5G, we have a little bit more complex spectrum portfolio with uh, low band for nationwide coverage, mid band for capacity in urban areas, and uh, high band for creativity. Uh, and the final piece, which I think uh, to this one is also, everybody sees 5G as something that is extremely associated with the city and enabler for smart cities happening in the big cities. But 5G will be central to create the clever countryside now. So not something that extend the digital divide, but actually help to close it. 
So 5G will be the 21st century farm roads here in the United States. And, and, and Peter Marshall, um, if you look to Ericsson, why is it so important to examine all this wide variety of capabilities that influence 5G? So the capability is a fundamental uh, aspect of making 5G successful. 5G is no longer a volume-based opportunity, but much more about the proposition. What can we do and how can we solve that problem? And therefore bringing that kind of capability mixed in together is really, really crucial. So we are talking about the operation capabilities. We're talking about the commercial capabilities, but also the technical capabilities. And then talking about this top capabilities, um, what does this mean for the user? So the capabilities um, that are important for the user and also for the customer are linked to more about the commercial aspects. So how can we make sure that the B2B solution and the B2B application or service is relevant to the industry partner and also to the end customer? How can we make sure that the go-to-market opportunity is well understood, is relevant and compelling? But in, to do that, the other capability from a commercial perspective is branching out to those vertical segments and learning from them and increasing the awareness of what 5G can do. In some areas, the awareness of 5G is quite strong, but it's nowhere near where it could be. And therefore, bringing that commercial awareness to those industry segments is going to be extremely important. The other two, which is probably the softer aspects, is how you make it happen and how you bring that collective to bring in the full benefits of what 5G can do. And this is linked to the soft skills. It's linked to the leadership, how you can have that inclusivity, the creation of ecosystems, but in a co-creation solution where people from all over the world, no matter who they are, can work collectively together to create something very special with 5G. And then the other one is much more about the skill set. The skill sets have to move on. We've been doing 2G, 3G and 4G for the last 20, 30 years, and we haven't changed our behaviors and how we approach development of technology. So we regard 5G as an innovation platform where we should be using that to its full extent and changing our behaviors to realize what, what is possible with that innovation platform. And, and Peter Linder, if we look at this, this first year and this top capabilities, What's your experience with what it meant for the user? Yeah, I, I think what I've seen is, is a little bit for the user, for, for the businesses, I've seen that the two things are coming in. This, that fact that we're doing private networks, no, not only public networks, and that the borderline between public and private networks is not so clear. We talk about who owns the spectrum, we talk about who owns the network equipment and who operates the network. And also the fact that in some cases will be a, a hybrid between a public and a private network. The second thing I see is very much like now how we're trying in the beginning of the journey of transforming sales to enterprises. Uh, it's not so much about SIM cards and buckets of data and, and minutes of voice any longer, but a more deeper understanding of how the business uh, work and how, how the business can leverage 5G to transform both the offerings and products to customers as well as internal operations. And then talking about businesses, if I'm a business, a lot of businesses, they have the question, what can I do with 5G? And can you give some examples what 5G can do for you right now as a business? Yeah, I think that a lot of 5G, the, the trickiest part with 5G is everybody's clear what's going to be in five years, but we don't know exactly how to, to kickstart and where, where to start. Uh, so I think there's two things uh, that are important, the mindset related. The first one, see 5G as a journey that's going to take place in the stairway. So it's the stairway to 5G. It's not something that's going to happen in the, you wait for an elevator and go in and push five and you get up there directly. What I mean with that is that this is a large number of iterative steps that you're going to take, go through. The second one is like this five-year perspective. It's very similar to when we went to college. We were clear about the car and the house we're going to buy when we were done. But the, the focus initially was had to be on the first two, three things uh, that we should nail this quarter and then move to next quarter. And then we move to the quarter after that. So I see this uh, the next 12 months or so very much focused on, on creating these skills and basic capabilities. We can sell 5G to enterprises. So therefore we have created a practitioner's guide for 5G covering nine different modules, which are taking you through things like, why is time to market important? Why do businesses even care about, have to care about spectrum? 
how can they approach these different business models, ecosystem questions, and making the right choices between 4G, 5G, and Wi-Fi 6, for example? I'm really looking forward to having access to, to, this, to this guide. Both Peters, thanks a lot for sharing all your experience from North America, from Europe, and from the rest of the world. And for the audience, thank you for watching.